Howard Stern, Jim Rome, Dan Patrick, and Greg Rampey. The Mountain Rushmore of talk show entertainment. Now, let's get back to the Barbecue Central Show. And it's our favorite time of the podcast year. That is bonus content time of the year. We're going to be running a series of bonus content interviews for my time at the HPB Expo 2023, which took place in Louisville, Kentucky. I was there March 11th and 12th, and that's when I got all these interviews leading off flat top that everybody knows about. But did you know the history of the unit? Caught up with Roger Daly at the show, and he let us know all about it. Hope you enjoy. Joined by Roger Daly, the owner of Blackstone. How did it all start? Well, it's a long story. Years ago, I was inspired by some griddles that I had seen in my neighborhood. And you couldn't buy them at a retail store. These were handmade in a local welding shop, and they were cooking breakfast on it. And I, I wanted to cook breakfast outside. And I said, I wanted to buy one. And you couldn't find one at a retail store anywhere. So I made one. That's, how, that's really how it all got started. What were you doing as a job before getting into Blackstone? Yeah, so I started my career out of college selling medical supplies for Johnson & Johnson. A few years after that, some friends of mine had started a fitness company. And they recruited me to come back and work for them in Logan, Utah, where I'm from. And I spent 10 years working for them and really learned how to develop, market, merchandise, product, put it in a box and sell it to retailers. And that's really where I learned this business. And along the way, I got inspired by this griddle that I had seen earlier in my life and thought, you know, one day someone should sell that at retail because you couldn't find one anywhere. And then after about 10 years, I resigned from that company, went out on my own, started a bunch of different businesses, did a lot of consulting for retail sales, which I knew how to do at that time quite well. Spent quite a bit of time in the infomercial industry and acted as a distributor for some popular uh, infomercials that had been successful on TV. My company took them to retailers. And one day I was sitting around and thought, you know, we never did that. I ever never, never did that griddle. I really need to do that. So... My engineering was so strong, I drew one on a yellow piece of notepad, gave it to a young man that worked for me, sent him to China, and said, go get this made for me. And that's how we got started. Let me back it up here just for a second. You said you're an original Utah guy? Yes. Are you a Mormon guy? Yes. Where did you do your Mormon mission at? Uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Is there anything in those two years? Two years. That you learned that you just inherently do now? because it was something that was ingrained in you back then? Yeah, probably a lot of things that I don't even really think about. But I've always been people-oriented. I love to talk with people. I'm not afraid to knock on a door like I did for two years and and greet people. And it wasn't something where we did, you know, a hard door approach, if you will, or hard selling. We just greeted people, and if they wanted to chat, great. If they didn't, no, no problem. But yeah, you learn a lot of things. You learn how to get up in the morning, how to be independent, how to plan, how to work with people you might not like, like your companion, right? Because you get assigned a, another missionary right. and never met him before, and now you got to live with them and, and work together. So you learn a lot of those kind of skills, but really just people skills, which came more naturally for me than it does some other people. I know there's a portion of that also where you have to also be of service, whether they want to talk to you or not. Maybe they need some yard work done or, you know, whatever. Are you just inherently also somebody that's looking to be of service, even in the Blackstone business? That's part of my nature, and it's part of the culture we have in our company is we all work, and we don't complain about what we do. If I'm walking through the parking lot and there's some paper, I pick it up and put it in the garbage can. If the pallets aren't stacked just right, I'll restack them. If I need to drive the forklift or if I need to clean the bathroom, and I'm not different from anybody else that works in the company. We all really have that same culture. And we're there just to do our job and just to make it better and help the company. So it doesn't matter what we do or what your title is at Blackstone, you just go do the work. When you remembered there was this flat top thing that you never got to, how much time had passed from when you had seen it originally, couldn't get one, and then revisited it to let's try and get this to retail? Ten, ten years really? at least, yeah. Yeah, it was a long time. Wow. I saw it years and years before. 
I even worked for the fitness company that I worked for originally, and before I really knew about retail distribution, retail marketing. So, what did that first one look like? Very much like the one I'm selling today. Really? Yeah, which is amazing. And 36 inches left to right and 20 inches deep seemed to be a real sweet spot for size. It was, which is funny because now we've been copied by a lot of competitors. And they're always 36 inches. Yes, I'm I like, noticed that. Why? And we have a 28-inch, a 17, a 22. There was no science behind those sizes other than they just fit. And they worked well for a one-burner, a two-burner. It's kind of funny how everybody copied the exact same size. Yeah. But, yeah, we just that was the right size. It was black. It had four burners. Very similar to today. And we've made a lot of improvements over time. But it was very similar to what we're selling today. I had mentioned a couple moments ago when we were talking before we started recording that flat top, at least in my niche of the world, started popping up maybe five or six years ago. And the first thing you would have said was, well, it's been around way longer than that. So when did Blackstone first get into the market selling? I, you should be able to answer that with an exact day and date, but I really can't because we made the first prototypes. That was in the early 2000s, probably 2005. Okay. And we had a hard time selling it. Nobody really wanted to... Who was Blackstone? Nobody knew us at retail. And I would get appointments with lawn and garden buyers, and they would look at it. And the original one was a little more portable because the legs folded up really easily, and you could take it wherever you wanted. Oh. So they thought, that's more sporting goods. Go show it to those guys. And so I'd show it to those guys, and they'd say, that's too big for the shelf. That should be in lawn and garden. Oh. So I got tossed back and forth between Lawn and Garden and Sporting Goods for a couple, three or four or five years. But we put it online and started selling some. And then I sold it into Sportsman's Warehouse, which was the first retailer who bought it. And they were also based in Utah, which made that easy. And so I thought, well, maybe that's who this customer is that wants to buy a griddle. It's a guy who goes camping and goes to deer camp. And it's portable. They can take it with them. So I thought maybe that was the distribution channel. And we kind of focused on that. Cabela's was next and Academy Sports. And they all kind of fell in line. And so that all happened really from about 2005 through 2010. Of those retailers that put it in, it sold extremely well. But in the overall picture of a business and a standalone company, it still wasn't really profitable as a standalone business. When you're selling it into those areas... Are you relying on those people to be able to sell it? I know there's a lot of folks here today even that are looking to get into a certain scenario where they can go in, teach whoever's bringing it in, their sales staff, how to use it and best techniques, all this other stuff. So when they get it home, there's no buyer's remorse. There's success right off the bat. I mean, we're not talking about rocket science here. It's a flat-top cooker, but still inherently people have questions they don't want to mess it up and instead of just risking it a lot of times people might just kick it off into the corner and say well i can't find any information or don't want to screw it up so maybe i'm not going to use it or use it as much do you ever think about any of that oh yeah i thought about it a lot but at the time the business was so small i didn't really have the resources to put the marketing behind it that it needed until we, until we finally started growing the brand and I got it to a, a volume where I could invest back in the business. So the first thing I did was started doing TV advertising. And no one was doing TV advertising on outdoor cooking at the time. And my commercials were 60 seconds and all I wanted to do was drive my brand name and I wanted to drive griddle cooking as opposed to grill cooking. And by then, the customers who were buying it were telling us, these were the real early adapters, early innovators. They were telling us that we didn't buy this for breakfast. We bought this for smash burgers. We bought this because we want to do tapenaki. We bought this to cook street tacos. All these other foods, and then the light bulb clicked for me. And I'm like, oh, this isn't just for bacon and eggs and, and French toast. This is about food variety that you can now cook outside that you cannot cook on a traditional gas or charcoal grill. You just can't cook those foods. So we started showing advertisements of stir fry and, and street tacos and shrimp and steamed vegetables, and it exploded. It, it took off. It hit social media. Today on TikTok, there's over a billion views of people using their Blackstone. Facebook has hundreds of thousands of unique users groups. We didn't start one of them. 
So it just, the timing was good. The variety of what you can cook was good. All of the shows on television about cooking and crafting food, all these things kind of hit simultaneously. You know, it's the old story. We got lucky. We got in the right place at the right time. We recognized what we had, and we really focused on that. The time frame, though, follows my mantra that I say it takes 10 years to become an overnight success. Yeah, totally so believe it. You look across this show specifically and everybody's got some form of flat top cooker there's expositions here that are solely flat top cookers there's nothing else here yep i heard a number of 80 percent is what blackstone has of the flat top market is that roughly as far as we can tell there's not really good industry statistics that you can 100 percent rely on but from what we can tell we believe we have about an 80 percent market share and that is, uh, you know, if you look at mass retail, you got Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, and Amazon. Those are your four big guys in outdoor cooking. And then Ace and all the independent hardware channels, the sporting goods channels like Dick's and Dunham's Academy, they do quite well in this category as well. Cabela's, all the, all the um, hunting, camping, sporting goods retailers. When you add all of that up and you look at the market share we have by retailer, it's how we conclude those numbers, but they're not exact. And we know there's going to be a lot of competition. Uh, you know, my biggest two competitors, Weber and Traeger, recently announced that they finally have griddles. And we think it's great. You know, the more people that are in the category, the more attention it gets, the bigger the whole pie will get. So we welcome the competition. Have you seen theirs specifically? I mean, there's a hundred other ones out there, but Weber and Traeger. We, we are have, yes. Two big names. What do you think yeah. about them? Well, I think that. Um, are you going to sue anybody? Yeah. Well, th- those two in particular, maybe. But <laughs> no, I think that they're safe from an intellectual patent standpoint, at least right now. We have a lot of patents pending that people don't know about, so there could be some developments in the future on sure. that. Where do you see this market in five years? Well, I mean, personally, I've been saying this for a long time. If you look at outdoor cooking, you've, you've basically got gas grills, charcoal grills, and smoking meat, which includes pellet and ceramic cookers, offset smokers. And then now you've got griddles. Yeah. And then there's electric, but it's a pretty small percent right now. But if you look at those four categories, griddles are absolutely growing faster than any other category in outdoor cooking. And I personally believe griddles have the potential to take 30 40% total market share over the next five years. That's a big number. Yep. We're at about 8 to 10 right now. How long do you see yourself staying in it? I want to stay as long as I can. I'm pushing retirement age. This is really fun, and I love what I'm doing, and now I've got it to a size where it's very rewarding. I've got a lot of good people that work in the company, so I don't have to do everything. And uh, why not keep going? What do you know about podcasting? <laughs> I've been on a few, but that's about it. I'd asked Jeremy Andrews this uh, last year when he was on the show, and I said, you guys seem to have a lot of parallels as far as fervent customer base and uh, passion for using the product. It seems like Blackstone would be a perfect place to have a Blackstone-related podcast. Has anybody ever brought that up about no. engaging yeah, with never consumers, have. bringing on some of your influencers, interviewing them, anything like that? Never have. We, and, you know, it's interesting. I agree with you because we have millions of fans at this point in time. With as many griddles as we've sold over the last five years in particular, it's probably over 7 million units by now. That's a lot of people. Yeah. And if you look at our social media sites, it's like Facebook is so interesting because... There's probably 25 users groups that have hundreds of thousands of members. We didn't start one of them. They're all organic, and that's kind of unique with Blackstone. The community, the users groups, uh, there's a users group for vegans. There's a users group for vegetarians. There's a users group for steak only. I mean, you name the kind of cooking, and there's a users group for that. So that would be interesting. That would be really interesting. Roger, really appreciate the time here. Continued success. Thank you. An inspiring story by an inspiring human, Roger Daly, CEO of Blackstone. Again, this is going to be a series of interviews that rolls out here over the next week or so with some of the biggest names in the live fire industry. Hope you enjoyed this one and be on the lookout for the next one. Remember, subscribe to the podcast feed by visiting the main website, the BBQ Central Show. 
www.thepodcastnetwork.com. Hit the subscribe button. It'll give you all the options right there. And we'll see you on the next one.